Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today we're talking about the Polaroid Captiva. There are so many vintage Polaroid cameras out there from over the years, but really they can be divided into two different sections. Polaroid cameras that you should buy, and Polaroid cameras that you should definitely not buy. And on the list of Polaroid cameras to absolutely avoid, are the Polaroid 500 cameras. See, vintage cameras like these Polaroid 600 box cameras and the SX-70s and the One Steps and the Spectras are all Polaroid cameras that you can buy today and still get filmed for through Polaroid Originals. But in the 1990s, Polaroid was releasing cameras that just didn't really take off and don't have the longevity that the SX-70s and the Spectras and the 600s all have enjoyed. These instant cameras were just not of the same quality and they just weren't very successful in the long run and all of these cameras took a new type of film called Polaroid 500 now the very first type of camera that was released for this format was the Polaroid Captiva so this is the Polaroid Captiva the Captiva was an SLR which meant that if you look through the viewfinder you were actually seeing through the lens for a number of years Polaroid wasn't making cameras like that the original SX-70s had viewfinders like that, but then the later One Steps and the 600s and the Spectras all just had extra viewfinders on the side. Now initially looking at the Polaroid Captiva, it does kind of look like just a big bulky point and shoot 35 millimeter camera, but it's designed with a folding mechanism built into it. So while it initially looks like this, it can actually pop and fold up and then it looks like this when you're actually shooting it. So it does have a weird kind of design to it. It has a built-in flash that you can't disable when you're taking your photos. It has a built-in timer, which not all Polaroid cameras did have, and it has an exposure compensation dial on the back, which most cameras did have. The Captiva also took film in a different kind of way than all the previous Polaroid models did. See, previous cameras, of course, took the film in at the front here, and it would eject the film out through rollers and come out the front of the slot on all the cameras. The SX-70s, the 600s, and the Spectre models. But with the Captiva, you would actually put the cartridge of your 500 Polaroid film into the bottom area here. Then when you took your picture, it would actually eject go through rollers and curl around down to the bottom until it sat in this clear section down here, which meant that the Polaroid that you took was entirely contained inside the camera and would be stored down here. You could watch it actually develop in this clear area and then actually slide out the images through this little slot at the side which meant that you could actually shoot an entire pack of Polaroid film and then let them sit in the camera until you wanted to take them out and store them somewhere safe. Now, unfortunately, the Captiva just wasn't super popular for Polaroid. It was only ever really available for about five years in the mid 1990s. And unlike most of the other Polaroid cameras that were released, there were only like two models for the Captiva. Well, the cameras like the One Step had all these different variations and different accessories and all these things that would go with them. The Captiva just had this model and and then an almost identical model that just had some different glass elements in the lens and the ability to date stamp your pictures as you were taking them. Now in terms of the film itself, the 500 film looks drastically different from any of the previous Polaroid Integral Instant film before it. It was originally released as being called Polaroid Captiva 95 film, but was just later retitled to being Polaroid 500 film. Now the actual frame of the Polaroid is in the middle of a large white border, almost like a Fuji Instax shot, but with an extra white section on top of the image as well. And of course, of course, this is in contrast to the kind of regular looking Polaroids that we had seen with the SX-70s and the 600s and the slightly larger ones that we'd seen with the Polaroid Spectras. The film itself had an ISO of 600, which meant that it was just very similar to the Polaroid 600 film that was already available. It was also a completely different style of cartridge that held the film inside of the camera. But like all previous Polaroid film, it did contain a battery at the bottom of the pack that powered these cameras. Now, after the Captiva was a not big success at all for Polaroid, they did make two more types of Polaroid 500 cameras, but they were both much, much cheaper than the Captiva. The Polaroid Joy Cam was a very, very basic 500 camera model, and it was released in the later 90s and into the early 2000s. And really the only super unique thing about this camera is that it had a manual ejection mechanism. So it had this kind of pull cord on the side that you would have to pull to eject your images out through the rollers. I see these joy cams all the time in like thrift stores and all over the place, but I think they're actually one of the worst Polaroid cameras that they ever made. 
they're very, very cheap. And again, they are not really worth your time. Now, the other product that used the Polaroid 500 film was an actual Polaroid instant disposable camera that was available for a few years in 1999. This was the Polaroid Pop Shot, and it came loaded with a 10 pack of 500 film inside of it, but it could not be reloaded after you shot all of the 10 photos on the pack. It also had the same kind of pull cord ejection mechanism that the joy cams had. But beyond that, there's nothing really super special about it. Besides the fact that it is pretty much the only disposable instant camera that was ever made. And in America, it came with a prepaid mailer so that you could send the camera back after you are done using it and then it could be properly recycled. So in the late 90s and the early 2000s, as Polaroid approached the mass discontinuation of all their instant film products in 2008, a lot of these products that they were releasing near the end of their instant film lifespan just weren't doing that well. The Captiva is an interesting looking camera with a fun kind of design and it's actually got a good quality build to it. But ultimately, it was just super short lived. The Joy Cam though has such little actual joy to it because it is a very cheap camera and again, just avoid those when you see those kicking around in thrift stores. Today, all the Polaroid 500 film has been discontinued for years and getting any that's been stored well enough to give you good results is a bit of a long shot at this point. Now, because the cartridge and the film is of such a different design from the other Polaroid 600 and SX-70 film and even the Spectre film, Polaroid Originals really has no plans to resurrect this type of Polaroid 500 film in the future. And on top of all of that, none of these cameras were really that popular in the first place. So there's really not much call to bring back that specific type of Polaroid film. So if you're looking to get into shooting Polaroids, then definitely avoid the Captivas and the Joy Cams because they do come up every so often out there in thrift stores and online, but they are useless and you can't get film for them and they're just gonna be a bit of a waste of your time ultimately. But if anybody's looking to do some kind of fun, interesting experimentation out there with instant cameras, then I will say that the best thing that I've managed to accomplish with this old Captiva is that I got it to take most of a picture on a Fuji Instax. Now I did this by taping an Instax to a Polaroid 500 and loading it back into the camera. This didn't go well though, and all of my attempts kind of jammed except for this one shot. So maybe that is something to play around with a little bit more in the future. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching and checking this out and learning about the Polaroid Captiva. And subscribe if you haven't done so already as I continue to make more videos all the time about these different formats for instant photography, for motion picture film, for photography film, and just kind of how to get into some of these formats and what to know and what to avoid. And if you're at all interested in supporting the channel, there is a link to the Analog Resurgence Patreon down in the description below. You can hop over there and check that out. Any sort of support that goes towards the channel is just allowing me to cover more topics in the future and pick up more cameras or shoot more film to do more examples with. So you can see what that's all about and thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon.